is up, Humanoid Nation? Wow, it's been a while. About a month. But hey, that's what happens when you're busy and living in not your place. But anyways, this video I'm going to be reacting to is by the homeboy himself, Osnap321. Why am I looking at the name when I know it's from him? Am I that bad that I'm forgetting his name? No. And I just played a game with him a couple days ago. It was a Deke the One. Wait, name dropping here? Oh, shut up, humanoid. But anyway, Osnap321. He's done another one of his amazing videos. It's called YouTube Film Reviewers Impression Slash Parodies. This guy, this guy right here, my God, he is lit. He is extremely lit. So, I promised him I would react to this a month and a half ago. I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it right now. So let's do this shit. That is sweet love. Can't forget his infamous, infamous hat. The viewer. Oh, he's back. Why are you putting YouTube in Google? Do you not have a tab or it's in your bookmarks? Or am I asking too many questions? Here we go. Here we go. Ah, uh, Struckman. If you like this, you can click right here and get Stuckman eyes. Stuckman eyes. Struckman is so good. Boo 2 and My Dear Halloween, the sequel to Tyler Perry's previous film, Boo and My Dear Halloween. Now as you know, I grew up with the original Boo film. Wait, what? So I was curious <laughs> to see what new directions they would do for the sequel. Can you believe that this is actually the 10th My Dear film? Huh. <laughs> That's pretty much Chris Struckman, he does do that a lot. Um. I hated this film. <laughs> I'm just going to say it right now. It's actually amazing how Tyler Perry keeps making these movies. People give, giving Perry him was money. Good in Gone Girl, which you know is a Okay, he was good in Gone kid, Girl. But everything else? <laughs> no. It almost puts you in a state of thought, like how bad Tyler Perry's movies are. Huh. Who are you looking at, Chris? All the goddamn time. Boo 2 and My Dear Halloween is probably the laziest film I have ever seen. The acting and the direction is just lazy, and the scene is going for way too long. Scenes that involve My Dear and these other weird old people were agonizing to sit through. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much a Tyler Perry movie. There's also a lot of unnecessary YouTube faces in here, so little kids can go, Oh look mom, look, I know him from YouTube! <laughs> Hopefully Tyler Perry's new film Acrimony will be a lot better than his previous work since it's looking to have a more stylistic direction. And as you also may know, I grew up with that film, so... Okay, no, how would you grow up with something that isn't even out yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, IG! How is he gonna do this? I hate Mars bars. Oh, is he gonna have Kite Man? Please tell me he's gonna have Kite Man. There's Kite Man. No way. Yeah, Kite Man. Norwood and North is quite possibly one of the worst animated films I've ever seen. And I saw the Emoji movie. And oh boy. <laughs> it's up there. I hated this movie. Pretty Everything much. about it, I hated. The animation was atrocious. The voice acting was a But abysmal. does anyone like Norman North know? I hated everything okay yeah so you hate everything so wait does that mean you hate yourself hate yourself <laughs> there's not one no not even one redeeming quality that this film has not even as pretty little colors to sit your kids in front of to shut them up because i doubt even little children compared to sit through this abomination it was so horrifically bad that it made me physically ill 
Yo, man, Rob Schneider, though. There's nothing good to say about Rob Schneider. Everything in this movie is a complete... No, wait. It is Rob Schneider is in Norm MacDonald. Who cares? It's a bad movie either the rest way. Of his peers who possesses an ability that only he has, which in this case is the ability to talk to humans. How does he have this ability? I don't know. Because the script says so. We have these three psychic lemmings who speak in gibberish, who act as the supposed comic relief, who only rely on immature... Jokes. <laughs> oh my god, that is so on par. Wait! You have the bland Did you, love interest. You took that from some other movie to review. Be a bland love interest. I forgot which one though. Hi. An over the top, two dimensional villain. The unrealistic smart kid who has no moral flaws and is perfect in every way. Pointless side characters who have no impact on the overall story. Ugh, I can just go on forever. Yep, you defo hate everything, okay? Ah, Jeremy Johns. Awesome tack, yeah. Okay, you don't even know how bad I was. He's got to the speak suit. Here. And guess what? And the red background. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It was. <laughs> Suicide Squad. So Suicide Squad <laughs> comes after the events of Batman of He Superman. does do that a lot. Spoiler alert, Superman dies. If you care. And that's when Amanda Waller comes in with the idea that since Superman is gone, we need a team of villains to fight off any extraterrestrial thing that will come next. Thus, the Suicide Squad is born. Not the Justice League, though, because we need Captain Boomerang. Show some respect. No, we never I need Captain tell you, Boomerang. Dude, this film was awesome. Nope, it wasn't. Well, like, the best parts of this film was the characters. Will Smith as Deadshot and Michael Robbie as Harley Quinn. Will Smith was playing oh. Will Smith. Will Smith is as character as Will Smith. Let's not lie. Will Smith thing. was playing Will Smith. Robbie, well, yeah, she's hot. Take notes, Dunkirk. One of the main things in this movie that did bug me, however, is the editing. Especially in action sequences. And Speaking of a guy who just choppy and edits a lot. And there was a lot of shaky cam in this movie. Stop the shaky cam in movies. Get some my nerves. I can't see what's going on on screen. I just get confused and it's not fun. Yeah, a bit like your arms waving about everywhere. Overall, guys, Suicide Squad is not as good as Guardians of the Galaxy, but I had a fun time with it. In fact, I would say I will buy Suicide Squad on Blu-ray. What? <laughs> All right, Suicide Squad, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Whatever it is, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more. Your movie sucks? Holy shit! Hi, welcome to my channel. Haven't seen Where his stuff lately. Out of everything. What you got for your movie sucks? Mostly agenda continue to normally file fraudulent take down notices against the videos despite the fact that they're so under copyright law the video is not infringing on copyright. So I watched blah, blah, blah. Independence Day Resurgence and it made me want to drink bleach. Stomity. <sighs> Which in some cases is not surprising considering the amount of crap Hollywood releases in the modern era. Sequels and remakes that really have any relevance is all but the norm now. Yeah, that's the voice of uh, your movie sucks. Thing. He talks like so that. So there's no doubt that Independence Day would get the same treatment. Jeez, this guy has a boring voice. <laughs> it's been 20 years since its release and everyone was desperate for a sequel. They even said it on the poster. So what the f happened here? Returning the movie, cast yeah, that, members came God back damn. since Jeff Goldblum. God damn ID too. He seems to be the only one getting that half a movie was retarded. It still looks like he just wants to get his paycheck and go home. Fuck off. Uh, 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 uh. Pullman also returns. Hurts and Will... Wait. What? No Will Smith? Will what Smith's son? Not even the original girl from the movie? Okay, now. It's because she wait, wasn't pretty enough? <laughs> They replaced her with someone who's in these pretty. stated that he was too expensive, that he read the script and wasn't impressed, and that he wanted his son Jaden to be in the film. Oh, fuck off. We all know how that went last time. Will came out saying it was because he was already attached to Suicide Squad, but you believe what you want. What makes it worse is that they replaced him with this other guy who's supposed to be his son, and he is bland. This goes for Chris Hemsworth's little brother too. God damn, I forgot he Both was in this. characters have no charisma or likability. Yeah, a bit like you. <laughs> they already fucked up by not having the charisma of Will Smith. 
but not casting Mae Whitman to reprise her role as because she's not pretty enough. Fuck you, she's not pretty enough. Available because she's still acting in Hollywood, or maybe it's because she's not a Sports Illustrated supermodel, and that's why. Oh, all the side characters are shit too. You have this annoying, horny as hell guy who won't shut up. Wait, I was wondering. Get a drink, maybe fall in love. And this bland female who is obviously pandering to China. For no reason. Real though, chill with the transition. Flick pick. Huh. I see some of this stuff. Flicking thoughts. Don't watch much of it. But he's okay. That's what his intro is now? I'm way behind. Hey there guys, how are you? And today we're going to be talking about the only badass with a hammer, Fix-It Felix. If you thought I was going to say Thor, then you were sadly mistaken, because Fix-It Felix has nothing on Thor. Now before we get into this review, here's some forced paper Wait, movies. Wait, does he actually now. smile now? Of square Because his earlier stuff he doesn't smile. To review movies in a cardboard box outside the theater. So Thor Ragnarok is the third Thor movie. And you know my stance on the previous door movie. And he does more Recently, editing, I mean Thor jump cuts. Get some magical and mystical MacGuffin. Thor Ragnarok, on the other hand, may be the best Thor movie yet. I mean, come on, you have Jeff Goldblum as the Grand Master. And that right there is all I ever need in my life. <laughs> Don't judge me. In my opinion, it's more Wait, like comedy. Flick pick has changed, man. Every scene in this movie feels like a Saturday Night Live sketch. That scene would fit right into Thor Ragnarok and wouldn't even feel out of place. On a quick side note, one of the best things about God damn, my eyes are hurting. Cat Dennings is not in it. And that alone makes a more magical and mystical experience. Yeah, Cat Dennings <laughs> should not be in Unfortunately, that also means no Natalie Portman. Damn. Okay, because in this movie, we have Hela, the goddess of death, played by Kate Blanchett. Yeah, it's Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman. There's also this big rock monster man called Korg who was hilarious. Annoying, but hilarious. I only thought that Korg looked like a recolor of the thing from Fan Force Thick. It's clobbering time. <laughs> I promise you, I am not crazy. Well, maybe just a little bit. Actually, no, quite a lot. Of course, this isn't a perfect. I missed a lot. Issues that I had. I missed out a lot of what thing that really bugged me was the color grading. To me, it just looked like a baby ate a whole oh, bag my of eyes. And it oh. up all over the screen. Okay, now nah, chill with the drum sound effects. Now, here are my final It's killing my eyes. For a mystical movie, Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> okay, why do you love using the words magical and mystical? Ralph, the movie maker? No idea who this is. For the Sherlock's. Justice League is exactly what I thought it would be. A wonderful, inevitable train wreck. As I predicted, it fell right on its face. So let's talk about it, together. I thought you were done doing superhero movie reviews. This is the fifth film in the DCEU, and not one of them have been good. Oh, there is Wonder Woman. And no, Wonder Woman is not a good movie. I uh. thought about this. Not one of the DCEU movies have been exceptional or creative, Wonder Woman. unpredictable, or how well written script, story, writing action, interesting editing, cinematography, good, acting, good music. So for some strange reason all these fanboys were still looking forward for this. I wasn't. It's just fanboys <laughs> giving blind praise because Oh Danny. look, it's Batman! Oh look, it's The Flash! Oh look, it's Wonder Woman! <laughs> oh look, it's Steppenwolf! Oh look, it's shiny action! <laughs> So, here are the reasons. <laughs> Number one, the characters. Once again, this is a problem that all DCEU movies have. Batman made too many jokes. That's not Batman. Well, I do everything. I go where he tells me to go, I do what he tells me to do. Let's start with Batman. Somehow they made his character even worse. By making him Batman do jokes. Act like Tony Stark. What are your superpowers again? 
rich. He's a complete joke in this movie. Why is Batman saying jokes? I know, right? Oh, something is definitely bleeding. <laughs> and stop putting Batman in broad daylight. It just it's makes weird. Him look stupid. The Flash is There's a reason why he fights in the dark. He looks like an absolute fool in the daytime. They have like a rhythm that I haven't quite been able to. Like brunch. Like, what is brunch? I think. What I do find funny is how the Flash can't even run. This is like the best He's always seen ever. And has this weird running style that makes him look stupid. It's like some weird running thing like this. Who runs like that? We're currently all beyond the trailer. And of course, you can check out some more episodes right now. She's okay. Now, I wasn't the biggest fan of the original 1950 Cinderella film, despite it being a cult classic. But will this new live action remake give me hope for strong, independent women in cinema? Spoiler alert, it doesn't. What was all that bullshit? Is that what she's doing now? As the original. And because of that, it has almost all the problems I had. Man, if she's doing all that bullshit. Okay, explain. The character of Cinderella I hated in almost every single way. She had no character flaws or growth, and by the end of the film, she is exactly how she was from the beginning. So what's the point? I also didn't like how Cinderella always wanted to be in a relationship with this prince. Why do women always feel the need to be subjected by a man? You know Cinderella is set in the 1800s, right? Yeah. Another complaint I had with the original that was even worse here was the over of women. The amount of cleavage being shown in the 1800s. Way too much to my liking, and I don't appreciate Where they put their bosoms out in front because of that goddamn corsage? Is that what it's called? Oh my day. The are fucking you, are you really breast thing. About that? What? Am I she going too far? Yeah. So have you seen Cinderella? Please comment below what you thought. The bosom thing, you know, where you in the comments. get it tightened around your goddamn chest I during that era. Yep, yeah, basically half your Where they make you have to starve yourself, where spoilers. like you tighten that the, the thing in Titanic where Kate Winsley is trying to get that thing on. And of course, as always, you can check more videos right now. Bosom. God damn, I, I don't even know what the name of it is. Cor 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 no, not corsage. Crochet, no. I'm gonna have to Google this after. You'll get to 1K subscribers soon. Ryan will get to 1K, because he's amazing. So, as always, Ryan, you do an amazing job, as always. I don't know what video you're gonna do next, but whatever video you do, is always gonna be great because you got you got the skills man you got definitely the skills I look forward to any of your other videos that are coming out and yeah sorry it took me um, a stream a long time to react to this and hopefully I can figure out what the hell that bosom shit is called but anyways right now take it easy humanoid nation humanoid freak out bye pasito, pasito, suave, suave.